Yes, ma'am, you can start now. So, good morning, everybody. Today, we have the 15th lecture of the web series, Institution Building and Nurturing Initiatives in Independent India. We are very grateful to Dr. Dhanush Singh who will be speaking today on CSIR initiatives. CSIR happens to be one of the oldest series of laboratories in the country. So he will be speaking on CSIR initiatives for national science and technology human resource development and recognizing excellence. This lecture series is organized by us in association with Chandigarh chapters of the academies NASI, INYAS, and INSA, and in association with the Punjab Engineering College. And it is supported financially by Haryana State Council of Science, Innovation, and Technology, the Haryana Science Council. So welcome Dr. Inder Pal Singh and Professor Javed Agniwala, himself of another award, and who is, will be our guest of honor today. So with this, I request Professor Grover to give his brief remarks and opening remarks. Professor so Grover. Morning. Thank you, Kia. So, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to this 15th lecture in this series on institution building and nurture initiatives in independent India, which is a part of commemoration of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahasav by all of us at the Chandigarh Fora. So today's lecture, as you have just been told, shall be delivered by Dr. Indrapal Singh, the Director of Human Resource Development at the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR. So Dr. Indrapal Singh, okay, is a very appropriate person to deliver this talk because few years ago, he had taken initiative of releasing this book. Okay, so this book is by virtue of the research put in by Dr. Indrapal Singh. This book was released in 2009 and it says, Bhatnagar Laureates 1958 to 2018. It is not only a description of Bhatnagar, but just Bhatnagar Laureates, but it also has lots of other related information and that had been the part of the research done by Dr. Hindrapal Singh, along with a colleague of his. So it must have taken several years to compile the book and bring it to the stage of its publication and dissemination all across India. So to give you a background of this lecture, uh, see, we had started this series sometime in September of last year. And Dr. Indrapal Singh's lecture had not been scheduled as we planned the lecture series. Sometime in November of uh, last year, uh, we wanted to invite Professor Gagandeep Khan, the first woman scientist to be honored with FRS as a chief guest at the convocation of Punjabi University Patiala. And uh, I wanted to, Arvind, the vice chancellor had uh, had asked me to write an article for the Tribune and I wanted authenticated information. So I reached out to Dr. Indrapal Singh for this information on Patnagar awardees, Patnagar awardees who made it to the FRS, Patnagar awardees who got other recognition at the international level, the relation between Patnagar awardees and the national awards, et cetera, et cetera. So, he was very generous. He shared me, with me everything that he had. He sent me all his articles, which had been published in Current Science and Elsewhere. And that is how I could write that article for Tribune in December of 2021. And then I requested him that he should speak at our forum because, uh, you know, nurturing and recognizing excellence also is a part of nurturing initiative and CSIR has been nurturing in you know, not only recognizing excellence, but CSIR nurtures all the research activities as we commence our lives as a scholars in the Indian system. So this is how we reached out to Indrapal Singhji and he was generous 
that he consented immediately and that is how we have today's lecture for me it's interesting to recall that in the and csr came into being in colonial times but do you do you realize that in the colonial times the colonial government had not set up any recognitions for the indian scientists okay the only right the recognitions that the colonial government had was in the form of you know making somebody sr you know conferring knighthood or giving titles like rai bahadur and so on so sure enough sir jc jc boss had been knighted in 1917 as in years retirement again acharya prafull chandra ray was also knighted in 19 in 1919 as he neared his retirement and uh, before cv raman got his nobel prize in 1930 1929 he, he was knighted but the the thing, conferment happened only in 1930 the year of his uh, award uh, nobel prize award down the line uh, shantiri sir batnagar was knighted and uh, so on but so this is how it was so in in the context of punjab i know that ruchiram sani was had been made a rai bahadur and uh, also shivram kashyap was a rai bahadur so these are the kind of thing but these was these were not prizes that were given to scientists for their recognition so as india becomes independent uh, you no know, first the government of india in the year 1954 instituted this national awards is padma awards you know so 54 is the first year when the padma awards were given and in the very first year many well known scientists in fact scientists got as a group got the largest fraction of recognitions three there were three people who were honored with uh, bharat ratna two of them were university teachers namely cv raman and dr s radha krishna who was then serving also as as the vice president of the country there was only padma one padma bhushan award and that is was given given uh, awarded to sn bos there were several padma bhushan awards and the padma bhushan award is included but nagar himself homi bhava as well as uh, jyan chandra ghosh so in the year 55 again three padma three bharat ratna awards were given and two of them went to the teachers okay one of them uh, went to the founder of uh, kashi vidyapeeth and who also had assisted uh, malviya ji for the creation of bhu the other one went to vishweshwaraiya and the third one went to pandit nehru himself so this is our history but nagar passed away 55 uh, the person who did not get recognized by either the colonial government or the indian government is begna saha begna saha of course was a member of the first parliament and long story but he did not get honored either with the padma awards or with a, a, other recognition even though he received he was an frs at a very early age a dear of uh, in 1927 itself but the british never recognized the colonial government never recognized him the independent government also did not recognize him so this batnagar awards as we know the story you know they were thought of uh, after batnagar had passed away saha had passed away jc ghosh had passed away in 57 and the first recipient was none other than the the founder direct uh, first director of uh, npl namely ks the christian so initially in 59 the award was only, first was first year only physics people are awarded and second year two mathematicians are awarded the legendary mathematicians of independent india namely the cr rao and k chandrashekhar k chandrashekhar and that is how the award was shared you know award is to be shared only you cannot decide and people are of equal merit cr rao is even today alive he is above 100 years of age and k chandrashekhar passed away only few years ago at the age of 97 they were both born in 1920 so little forward when i was a student at punjab university i wasn't conscious of of batnagar awards even though batnagar award had come into being it was being given in various fields by that time in our class the only person who was very conscious of batnagar awards was manmohan gupta and he had decided as Dr. A. A. N. Mitra got the Batnagar Award for the year 1970. He had made up his mind that he will go and work with 
Dr. A. N. Mitra. He did not apply anywhere. And sure enough, as we completed our master's in 1972, Manmohan went to work with the Patnagar Awardee, Dr. A. N. Mitra, Professor A. N. Mitra at Delhi. I didn't know what was store for me later. I mean, I joined TIFR and lo and behold, in the year 1974, uh, I joined uh, Professor R. Vijayaragavan as a PhD student. And the, the very same year, Vijayaragavan also got the Patnagar Award. Ritu Suri from our class had joined KC Chopra, uh, this KL Chopra, and KL Chopra also got the Patnagar Award a year later. So from our class, there were several of us who had the privilege of having done, done their our PhDs uh, with the Bhatnagar Award. So at TFR, of course, Ajit Kimbavi, my batchmate, was a, worked with Yad Nandigar, who was a Bhatnagar Awardee. And uh, Vasant Kulgani was a student of uh, Govind Sroop, who was also a Bhatnagar Awardee, etc., etc. So, I mean, as time went by, from our class, Ajay Sood went on to win the Bhatnagar Award in the year 1990 before when we were students uh, when we were passing out in, in 72 sk joshi had got the badnagar award and we had been made uh, familiar with professor sk joshi's work by professor k n pathak because he had introduced us to that article written by state physics volumes etc etc i can find many corrections during in my life and the people i have known all all through so I have taken a bit longer, but I got carried away. But I'm very happy that we are going to listen to the full story of uh, Bhatnagar Awards and Bhatnagar Awards and their relationships with the other international awards and so on and so forth from none other than Dr. Inderpal Singh. Thank you very much. Back to you, Kea. Thank you, Professor Grover. Your stories are always very interesting and your reminiscences. Thank you. So now I request Dr. Deepak Salunke, um, Chemistry, Punjab University, Chandigarh, to introduce the guest of honor. Professor Deepak, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good morning. And thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Grover. Uh, I really feel honored to get this opportunity to introduce Dr. Agrivala on this event. Dr. Agrivala is a. Yes, closer to the mic. Uh, we have not, not very better. Better now? Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you need to be closer to the mic. Hello, is it better now? Yes, yes it is. Deepak. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I really feel honored to get this opportunity to introduce Dr. Agrivala on this event. Dr. Agrawala is an immunologist and currently professor at the Department of Biomedical Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Roper. He was also a dean research at this premier institute. Before his joining at IIT Roper in 2018, Dr. Agrawala was a chief scientist and professor at the CSIR Institute of Microbiotechnology, Chandigarh, where he joined in 1989 after his PhD in the field of biomedical organic chemistry from Agra University. Dr. Agrivala is an elected fellow of all the three major Indian science academies and was awarded with Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize for Science and Technology for his contributions to the field of medical sciences in 2005. Dr. Agrivala is also a recipient of National Bioscience Award by Department of Biotechnology India along with a J.C. Bose Fellowship, UP Science Award, Wheel and Merinda Gates Award and CSR Innovative Funding Awards. Dr. Agrawala has been a visiting faculty at the Hammersmith Hospital London from 1994 to 96 and Trudeau Institute USA uh, from 2001 to 2002. Dr. Agrawala's group has made seminal contributions in the area of immunology and vaccines and is well known for his specific research on tuberculosis as evidenced by several publications uh, in high journals of uh, repute international patents, technology, and high citations. He has over 150 research publications and about 13, 000, with about 13,000 citations so far. Specifically, Dr. Agrawala's group has pioneered research in the area of co-stimulatory molecules and pathogen regulatory receptors mediated regulation of immune system. These original discoveries encouraged 
Biogen, a pharma company to develop therapeutic antibodies against CD80 to treat patients suffering from refractory and relapsed follicular lymphomas. In addition, his group has made contributions in the area of novel vaccination strategies against tuberculosis. Recently, the group has engineered a chimeric vaccine in collaboration with Melbourne University, Australia. Dr. Agrabala has discovered a novel role of chirolomycin A, a bipyridin natural product, as an immunosuppressive agent. The technology developed on this immunosuppressive molecule is licensed for $3 million US dollars to Nostrum Pharma USA. I feel proud to get associated with Dr. Agrabala in 2015 via Crick platform, which is now turned to a very good collaboration in the area of vaccine at joint development. With these words, I now welcome Dr. Agrabala to give his address on this event. Thank you very much, Dr. Kalunke. Now I request you, Professor Agrivala to present his speech. Professor Agrivala, please unmute yourself. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Deepak, uh, for the very elaborate introduction. Um, grateful to the organizers, especially uh, Professor Arun Grover and other organizers to give me this opportunity. So I'm going to just tell you about this web series. It's, it's really, today's topic is uh, very interesting, institution building and nurturing in independent India. So I'll slightly tell you about this, what I have in my mind about this topic. So when we have in mind that institution building simply, you know, it refers to any structure that fulfills a role related not only to education, but subsequently, if educational institution is built, then it will ultimately go to build healthcare, recreation, public works, city halls, courthouses, judicial centers, you know, police, detention facilities, military bases, transportation, everything. The airports, railway, bus stations, besides you know, education facility. So this educational building, probably what we have right now in our minding is not confined only to university colleges, technical institution or schools, right? So institution building model should be, you know, it should be primarily designed for developing India that have taken the path towards modernization their overriding goals for being your socio-economical uh, progress and the national building. So the building of any institute ultimately leads to the building of the nation. That should be the main theme, that should be the main goal. So that should be the most cardinal feature. So building of any institution is critically dependent on social, economic, political, it receives from the government and public. So the well-directed and efficient building of institution should ensure ultimately the better quality of life for the Indian. So if it is not providing a better uh, quality of life, then it's not a, you know, institute building. So if institution has failed to deliver for which it has been built to deliver, it may be completely eliminated or restructured for a fresh start or completely new institutions may be created. So in past, if you see institution building has focused on the creation or expansion of institutions and the technical skills needed to operate them. So these reforms must deal, must deal not only with institution, but also with the individual who work in them. So there is also a need for result-based leaderships that promotes and applies integrity, accountability, transparency, as well as a general acceptance of the mindset, beliefs, and customs that favor integrity over favoritism or culture. Right. So the relationship, whether it's a personal or professional is at the center of who we are. And great relationships not only make working easier, 
they also improve productivity and deeply connected relationship cultivate trust mutual respect and then nurturing of the future talent of the country so the relationship is very important so relationship take effort and hard work but like anything important in our life they are well worth preserving so good relationship is important in nurturing the future leadership in building future leadership of the country so make a dedicate we have to make our leaders or the people who are responsible for building the institution they may they should have a dedicated time for those who matter and they should attack the problem and not the person so when problem arise and they will take a time instead of study take the opportunity to learn something and practice solving problems efficiently and collaborate so the person while nurturing you know the future leadership or nurturing any uh, talent person you know and so don't respond to any situation until you have nothing can cause more harm to a relation than jumping to false conclusion so let go of your biases and judgment that be open minded and work on getting informed so never try to under promise when you are nurturing somebody but rather you should over deliver so under promise and then over deliver so if you under promise you can over deliver but you over promise then you under deliver and communicate candidly and honestly so the good nurturing is started with good communication and don't let silence get between what you have to say to each other so good communication has to be developed and the process takes effort don't stop talking when something needs to be said and don't speak when someone needs someone else needs to be shared to be heard so be passionately appreciated everything everyone wants to be appreciated don't wait for perfection to strike just appreciate and enjoy your colleagues your family your friends and the people whom you want to nurture whom you want to coach and one has to connect through services so too many relationships are built on while you are nurturing but the only way to develop a relationship will last if you treat it at a place where you give to give and not to take so working on nurturing can only be successful on your important relationship in a way of life that's worth pursuing and because the quality of those relationship is quality of your life thank you very much thank you professor admiwala for those very thought provoking words and now i request professor sandeep kumar dean students affairs at punjab engineering college india to introduce today's speaker Professor Sandeep Kumar. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So I am feeling honored to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Indrapal Singh. Dr. Indrapal Singh is currently working as senior principal scientist at CSIR HRD Group, New Delhi. Over 25 years of experience in CSIR, Dr. Singh has been putting unrelenting efforts in realizing the mandate of CSIR HRDG. along with involvement and participation of eminent scientists experts from academia industrial r&d units science and technology departments dr singh obtained mtech from punjab university and phd from guru gobind singh in the prasth university the roles played by dr singh have varied 
and evolved with time, he elucidated the performance of academic institutions in fulfilling science and technology capacity building goals on the basis of CSIR net exam. His work describing demographic variations in basic science education in India was chosen for press release by Current Science, a leading interdisciplinary science journal of India. He also authored some, interested, some interesting articles on awards, which can be exploited as interventional tools in the management of awards and recognitions. He is fellow of Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers and Society for Information Science. Currently, Dr. Singh is administering Shanti Suru Bhatnagar Prize, the most coveted award for science and technology given by CSIR each year in recognition of outstanding achievements made by scientists. He has compiled a very brief and beautiful title, book titled Bhatnagar Laureates 1958 to 2018, as already mentioned by Professor Grover. Besides this, the flagship programs of CSIR, such as GN Ramachandran Gold Medal for Excellence in Biological Sciences and Technology, CSIR Young Scientist Awards, and Bhatnagar Fellowship are also being administered out of his responsibilities, leading a team of multidisciplinary personnel. So with this brief introduction, back to Professor Kiyama. Thank you, Professor Sanjeev Kumar, for uh, bringing us this very interesting profile. Thank you. And now I request Dr. Inderpal Singh to begin his talk. Dr. Singh, please. Unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sanjeev, for kind your kind introduction. And uh, good morning to you all. And thank you very much. I feel honored and privileged to be here with you. Uh, so I'll be, uh, I, today I'm going to speak on CSIR SND capacity building initiatives. I have uh, made this talk in two parts. First, I'm going to cover this SND capacity building initiatives of CSIR. And uh, in the later part, I'm going to cover CSIR awards instituted for promotion and recognition of accidents and how these awards breeds for the national and international recognitions. Am I audible? So uh, I'm going to share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir, it's visible as well as you are audible. So uh, as you are aware, that uh, CSIR was founded in 1942 and has grown to become one of the India's largest R&D organization. The R&D activities of CSIR includes biotechnology, chemical, drugs and pharma, electronics, glass and ceramics, leather, mining, minerals, metals, oceanography, scientific instruments, mechanical engineering, aerospace, electrochemistry, toxicology, environmental engineering, and so on. So uh, as of today, uh, it runs 37 laboratories throughout the nation with a collective staff of around 10,000, including 3,500 scientists and 7,000 technical and supporting staff. I am pleased to share this information that the CSIR scientific staff of constitutes about three to 4% of India's scientific manpower, but they contribute to around 10% of India's scientific output. As per Shimago's institutions ranking, World Report 2022, CSIR is ranked 39th out of 1745 institutions worldwide. Couple of months back, uh, our former DG, Dr. Sani, spoke about uh, CSIR various uh, technological initiatives at this forum itself. Uh, uh, he spoke that CSIR has been a catalyst in enhancing the quality of life of millions of people across the country citing some of the successful technologies such as a Drishti, uh, a transmitometer, a fast and accurate instrument that automatically measures the, and reports the runaway visual range, uh, a five-seater aircraft 
which can be used as a taxi or air ambulance designed by CSIR in collaboration with Mahindra Aerospace Laboratories, Aerospace Private Limited, an enzymatic degumming process for rice bran oil, drug for treatment of osteoarthritis, streptokinase, and the list is too long. I can't name at this uh, all of them at this stage. Overall, there had been technologies which have given India a place of pride. Besides all these, CSIR is playing a remarkable role in academic research. Recently, uh, Stanford University published a list of top two most two percent most cited scientists in twenty two disciplines. The list includes two seven zero nine scientists from India. Combining, uh, uh, if I'll combine this uh, scientists from IAC, IITs, and all CSI lab, the share would be somewhere around uh, thirty percent. And if we take individually, it looks like uh, like sixty two uh, percent scientists from IITs. Uh, uh, 26 percent to CSIR and 12 percent working in IAC. So I just wanted to make a comment out here that although CSIR focuses on prime, uh, applied research, technology transfer and patents, CSIR research is as far as with IIT or IAC. Over the years, see, uh, this uh, CSIR, apart from this uh, uh, technologies and all that thing, CSIR has been focusing a in a significant manner on the development of SNT human resource. Various schemes for numerous beneficiaries. If you want to do a PhD, CSIR offers JRFs, SRFs, Shyama Prasad Mukherjee Fellowship. CSIR promotes research by way of pro providing postdoctoral research fellowships. It provides research grants. We have a scheme for supernated scientists. We have uh, we provide travel grant and support for holding conferences and symposium. I'll briefly covering, covering these flagship programs of CSIR in next slide. It all began in 1943 with extramural research support to scientists working in universities and R&D institutions. Uh, uh, this is the scheme as old as CSIR. Uh, it is broadly given in uh, 11 uh, boards, 11 disciplines. And uh, uh, the quantum of research grant is up to 15 to 20 lakh. The importance of uh, uh, well-trained workforce postdoctoral has been recognized worldwide. On these lines, CSIR in 1950 instituted senior research fellowships and research associateships. You all agree with me uh, that receiving a prestigious honor induces winner to work harder besides potential motivation enhancing effect Awards raise the likelihood of getting grants, better students, co-authors, thereby increase productivity. CSIR instituted Bhatnagar Prize for the promotion and recognition of excellence in the year 1958. Another award, CSIR Young Scientist Award, was instituted for recognizing talent for the scientists below 35 years of age. Uh, the upper age limit for Bhatnagar Prize is 45. In 1958, Scientist Pool and Emeritus Scientist Scheme was instituted. Uh, another flagship program of CSIR, the NET exam, was formulated in 1983 to evaluate students from the wide spectrum of universities at a common platform. I'll throw some light on uh, that exam. As you know, uh, this the first exam was held in uh, 1983, in which around 5,577 students appeared. Yeah. Uh, on 31st December 1989, CSIR collaborated with UGC and jointly conducted this net exam. And from 1990 onwards, the exam was conducted twice in a year in five disciplines, C, E, L, M, P, like C, chemical sciences, earth sciences, life sciences, mathematical sciences, and physical sciences. Earlier, there were two papers. A part one was uh, objective type and the part two was a subjective type. From 2011 onwards, uh, the pattern was changed and it uh, the paper was set up with in an mcq type paper type uh, parts like in uh, part a uh, the general type of questions were asked part b subject related part c high value questions to check the candidates knowledge for scientific concepts in 2012 uh, we introduced this engineering sciences later discontinued in 2015 due to poor response in joining the percentage of students from 9, December 19, these uh, CSIR entrusted this responsibility of conducting the exam to NTA in a CBT mode. And uh, uh, recently, we conducted this exam this, uh, in the month of January uh, to February. Uh, it was conducted for four days. 
and uh, you will be sir like uh, i'll be happy to tell you like the the students enrollment was 2.25 lakhs so from 1983 this registration was 5000 to till that the recent exam 2.25 lakhs enrollment of the students here is an interesting slide to show the gender wise uh, and the discipline wise statistics of uh, net exam if you see this uh, statistics uh, uh, women enrollment is better in almost all the subjects except, except in arts sciences some time ago uh, only this life sciences was picking up now you see uh, in chemical sciences in mathematical sciences and somewhere near about the both the percentage are near like physics in the physical sciences only earth sciences the uh, it is marginally low and the subject wise data also shows the maximum enrollment in life sciences followed by uh, chemical sciences physical sciences mathematical sciences and the least in earth sciences now coming back to my this uh, slide as a young scientist i, I told i already spoken about this it was instituted in 1987 the bhatna this bhatnagar fellowship it was instituted in 1989 is the most prestigious and highest in the country professor b k bachavat professor m m sharma dr mashelkar professor govardhan mehta a k sood the current principal scientific advisor to government of india are among the bhatnagar fellowship winners the objective of this scheme is to recognize outstanding scientists to pursue excellence in scientific research and innovative technology development thereby enhancing the scientific and technological competitiveness of the country in nine, in 2001 uh, this spm was instituted on the occasion of birth centenary year of dr shyama prasad mukherjee who was the first vice president of india first vice president of csir in independent india this this scheme is open to uh, toppers of csir net and uh, this gnr medal instituted in 2004 Uh, to recognize outstanding work in biological sciences and technology now moving on to the second part of my presentation which focuses on some statistical aspects of csir award recipients i hope you will find interesting as i mentioned earlier the uh, csir young scientist award scheme was to recognize contributions made by its young scientific staff upper, uh, with upper age limit of 35 years till date it has been given to 213 young scientists and the subject wise data does not show any skewness towards any of the discipline and the gender wise statistics shows that the women share is 14% like in uh, uh, the total number of recipients in biological sciences out of uh, 48 are women in chemical sciences four are women earth atmospheric sciences 35 men and five women engineering sciences 45 men and 7 women and in physical sciences 5 women with uh, 28 men they got at this uh, csir young scientist award over the years uh, this uh, uh, the csir young scientist scheme has gained the importance as 20 of its recipients got the prestigious bhatnagar prize out of 213 the name includes Uh, professor gauri shankar n chandra kumar s w n nakvi nagaraja this is the award year 1980 like nagaraja got uh, ysa in uh, 1988 and later uh, in 1994 he got bhatnagar prize in biological sciences only uh, uh, and there is a ganesh pande dr ss ss rai uh, dr saurabh pal ghanshyam swarup uh, two people got it in 1991 amita mukhopadhyay and tk chakravarti ranade got it in 1992 uh, murli shastri got it in 1993 and later bhatnagar prize in 2002 uh, ashi two people ashish lele and vinod bakuni got it in 1996 and both got it in uh, 2006 uh, in engineering and uh, biological sciences uh, in uh, 2001 Mitali Murkarji got YSA and later got uh, Bhatnagar Prize in 2010 in Medical Sciences. Shankar Dorai Swami from NIO Goa he got the YSA in 2002 and later but got Bhatnagar in 2011 in Earth Sciences. The Pradeep Ghosh, Savik Mathi, Rahul Benerji, Amol Kulkarni. So if you see like uh, 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 the Professor Gauri Shankar took 10 years. to get this bhatnagar like in 1987 he got it in 
but he got ISA, and in 1997 he got Bhatnagar Prize. So it took he took ten years. It's the same way Anchandra Kumar took uh, nine years. So uh, so uh, the average is out to be uh, comes out to be nine years if you take an average. Uh, while comparing this Young Scientist Awards with INSA Young Scientist Award, which was established in 1974, but for comparison, the INSA Young Scientist Awards were taken from the year 1987, and there were 702 uh, recipients of INSA Young Scientist Award. And out of this 702, 51 have got the SSV prize also. Uh, uh, the person, if you see the percentage, SSV, uh, this YSA got 9.5%. Uh, uh, Bhatnagar Prize and uh, the Sita Young Scientist Awards have got a chance of 7.4%. So I am I, I don't hesitate to say this thing that CSIR Young Scientist Awards yeah. that uh, uh, CSIR Young Scientist Awards has around 2% better chance than INSA Young Scientist Award uh, to get a Bhatnagar Award. Uh, here is the uh, GNR medal for uh, uh, excellence in biological sciences and technology. Uh, this was um, instituted in the fond memory of Professor G. N. Ramachandran, a pioneer in protein chemistry and founding father of structural biology in India. Ever since its inception, this award has gained high respect in scientific community. Every year, this uh, GNR award is bestowed on a scientist who has made outstanding contribution in the area of biological sciences and technology. The data shows the winners affiliated with IAC have dominated, receiving eight out of 18. The first row, like if you see the first row, Professor Vijayan Balaram, uh, Professor C. Ramakrishnan, and uh, MRN Murthy. They, uh, they, they, they are all four are from IAC. And in the second row, you see uh, R. Vardarajan, Umesh Varshne, uh, uh, this Nagaraja, and Muniappa. They, 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 these four are from IAC. Surprisingly, only one woman, Professor Jaya Tyagi from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, have been awarded GNR medal since its inception, despite the fact that number of female researchers in biological sciences are more in comparison to other disciplines. Uh, the other recipients, the name includes, the first uh, recipient is Professor M. M. Vijayan, later uh, in 2005, P. Balram, Professor T.P. Singh, C. Ramakrishna, M.R. Murthy, R.V. Hosur, and so on. In all cases, these awardees obtain their postdoctoral training from top ranked foreign institutions. And I am happy to share this fact with you, like about this Professor Vijayan, who recently passed away. He worked with Nobel laureate at University of Oxford, and he is the only exception with three of his students also being bestowed with GNR medal. Professor T.P. Singh, Dinkar Salunke, and Rajan Sankar Naran. Now comes the Bhatnagar Prize for Science and Technology, which is given to the scientists below 30, 45 years of age. Uh, till date, it has been awarded to 585 scientists. The first, as uh, you all know, the first was awarded to Dr. K.S. Krishnan, the sole recipient in that year, as mentioned by Professor Grover also. Uh, the age limit for engineering and medical sciences was 55. Uh, from 1970 onwards, the age limit of 45 was set up in all the disciplines. And it uh, normally two awards are given in each discipline. Uh, if you see this uh, 2020 year, uh, this was the iconic year as two awards in each disciplines, 14 scientists have been recommended for SSB prize. Uh, here is the subject-wise distribution of Bhatnagar Prize. Uh, uh, the relative percent, uh, percentage of recipients is low in earth sciences uh, due to the reason that earth sciences discipline was introduced in 1972 with Shiti Indra Mohan as one as its first recipient and later in 1989 changed to uh, earth atmospheric ocean and planetary sciences. And uh, Professor P. C. Pandey was the first recipient in 1989 to uh, who got it in uh, uh, planetary sciences. Uh, I'll show the uh, youngest Bhatnagar laureates. Uh, this Professor M. G. K. Menon was the youngest laureate. 
who got the award at the age of 31 years. Others amongst ours, Professor Sienna Rao, Professor V. v. Kumran, Professor M. M. Suri. M. M. Suri uh, was a mechanical engineer. Uh, he uh, developed a reverse growing technique for diesel engine superimposed on a hydromechanical transmission called Suri transmission. Uh, they, the Professor Menon got it at the age of 31. Uh, Sienna Rao, uh, Kumran, and Mamnoor Suri got it at the age of 33. The other names includes uh, Kalyan Raman. Uh, he Kalyan Raman, he got it in uh, medical sciences uh, with uh, at the age of 34. Virender Singh, Professor Govardhan Mehta, uh, Dr. Nina Gupta. Nina Gupta is the only sole recipient, women recipient, who youngest uh, recipient. Uh, Professor M.S. Swaminathan, Atwal, H.K. Jain, M.M. Sharma, Raghunath, and Professor Ashish Dutta got it at the age of 35 years. H.S. Setna, Bimal Kumar Bachavad, Girish Saran Agarwal, S.K. Joshi, Professor P. Balram, Professor Bakshi, Professor Maninda Agarwal, Professor Nitin Saxena got it at the age of 36 years. Majority of the people got the, like in 585, majority of the people have got their this award at, in their 43rd and 44th year of their age. Uh, I, I, I don't have any intention in implying the people who are uh, like uh, under the age of 35, 36 are young and those above 36 are not young because this is 45 years is also uh, uh, treated to be a young. Uh, majority of these awards have gone to men and only 21 women could achieve the status of Bhatnaga laureate titlet. The first woman, woman recipient was Prof, uh, Professor Ashima Chatterjee. Uh, and if you see the gender-wise classification of uh, Bhatnagar Prize from 1958 to 2021, uh, in biological sciences, four women have got it: Professor Ashima, uh, this uh, Archana Sharma, uh, Professor Manjure, Subha Tole, Vatsala Thirumailai. And in chemical sciences, four women have got it: Ashima Chatterjee, Charushita Chakravarti, Yamuna Krishnan, Jyotirmay Das. In earth sciences, only one woman had got it, and uh, her name is uh, Professor Sudipta Sen Gupta from Jadapur University. And engineering sciences, uh, out of 83, two women had got it, Rama Govindrajan and Sandhumikra Bandopadhyay. In mathematical sciences, three women have got it, Professor Raman Parimala, Sujata Ramudrai, and Nina Gupta. And the maximum in medical sciences, six women have got it, Indranath, Shashi Vadva, Vijay Rakshmi Ravindranath, Mitali Mukherjee, Vidita Vaidya, and the most recent, recent one, Bushra Atik. And in physical uh, sciences, a sole uh, recipient, uh, Professor Aditi Sende. So if you see the decade wise, like from uh, uh, in 1960s, uh, only one woman have got it. In 70s, only one woman got it. And in 80s, three women have got it. 91, 90s, three women had, and the previous decade, seven women have got it. So the number of women scientists has increased over the decades. Now, uh, the Royal Society of London, established in 1660, is one of the oldest scientific societies in the world. It has around 1700 fellows from all areas of science and engineering and medicine, including 85 Nobel laureates. The data indicates that 49 scientists of Indian origin who obtained their tertiary level education, that is up to the level of undergraduate and postgraduate from India, have been elected to FRS London since the inception of Bhatnagar Award. Out of these, 25 are the Bhatnagar Awardees. Like out of 49, these are the 49. There may be other people also like who, who, who have not got their tertiary level education from India, but they are of Indian origin. Uh, but I have included the list as the people who have got their tertiary level education and uh, uh, got this uh, FRS. So in their list of 49 people, 25 are the Bhatnagar awardees. The uh, names in bold uh, are the uh, recipient of Bhatnagar award. There is an interesting slide. Uh, the education quali qualification of these 49 FRS indicates 44% uh, of the scientists obtained their PhD from abroad and preferred to stay in India. 
this uh, this is the statistics of these 49 people who have got the frs which includes the bhatnagar prize also and 28% scientists obtained their phd from india and settled uh, in india 20% scientists obtained their phd from abroad and settled abroad 8% scientists obtained their phd from india and settled abroad if you see the age statistics uh, uh, of indian origin frs this varied from 36 years to 73 years at the time of election to frs majority of in, uh, frs of indian origin have been elected to frs after uh, 4 to 4 to 27 years of getting the bhatnagar award ashok uh, professor ashok sen is the uh, recipient of uh, fundamental prize physics prize for the year 12 2012 is the youngest among a scientist of Indian origin elected to FRS, that is four years after receiving the Bhatnagar Award. So uh, we can say that the recognition of excellence through Bhatnagar Award, the India's most coveted prize in science and technology, acts as a catalyst in motivating the scientists to pursue world-class research in which, which may lead to other national and international recognitions. Now, uh, uh, there is uh, another recognition, the National Academy of Sciences USA, which was established in 1863, is the Society of Distinguished Scholars. Its fellowship is considered one of the highest recognition that a scientist can receive. Presently, there are 2,400 members and 500 international members, of which 190 have received the Nobel Prize. Out of this 500 scientists recognized by NAS as a foreign associate, till date 15 are from India. And here's the list. And this out of, uh, it is heartening to note that all these luminaries from India are the recipients of the Bhatnagar Prize, except Professor V. Radhakrishnan. Like these out of 15, only Radhakrishnan is not a recipient of Bhatnagar and all others are the recipients of the Bhatnagar Prize. Another recognition, uh, uh, international recognition, the National Academy of Inventors. The uh, National Academy of uh, Inventors Fellow Program has around 1,500 fellows. Interestingly, the Indian Origin Fellows comprises one out of every 11 fellows of NI, NAI. Uh, that comes to around 139 fellows. The biographical information on these shows that majority of the fellows obtained their bachelor's degree in India but prefer to work and stay abroad. Collectively, the fellows holds, these fellows hold 53,000 US patents which have generated over 13,000 licensed technologies and created more than 1 million jobs. In addition to this, over $3 trillion in revenue has been generated based on this NAI fellows. And with the only exception of Dr. Mashel Kar, who is a recipient of Bhatnagar Prize, preferred to work and stay in the country. Rest like out of 139 people, only Mashel Kar saw he, he was the uh, he, he preferred to stay back in the country rest of 138 they are settled uh, and uh, abroad another international recognition this uh, the world academy of twas the world academy of sciences currently it has 1296 fellows from 105 countries and till 2021 the academy consists of 256 scientists as a fellow representing india of which 51% are the recipient of the Bhatnagar Prize. Uh, there is another interna international recognition, uh, the TWAS Prize, the World Academy of Sciences. Uh, uh, this TWAS Prize is ranked one of the highest scientific accolades bestowed on an outstanding scientist in developing countries. The latest list shows uh, that there are 272 prize, prize winners from 28 countries. Uh, and if you see, like, uh, uh, this is the geographical distribution of uh, TWAS prize winners. Uh, the India dominates the number of recipients, 65 followed by China, 63, <coughs> Brazil, 44, 41. Of these, like of these 65, 51 are the recipients of the Bhatnagar Prize. Uh, and this table, the, this table takes a snapshot of the time taken by the SSB awardees to win the TWAS Prize. Like seven people have got it zero to five years. 20 people have got it 
to took six to ten years to get this Bhatnagar Prize uh, to this international recognition Twas Prize after the receipt of Bhatnagar Prize. And nine have got it. Uh, nine took sixteen to twenty years, and uh, only three took twenty-one to twenty-five years. Uh, now coming to the uh, national recognitions, uh, this table will indicate the Bhatnagar awardees recognized with Padma awards and fellow of uh, three academies of national character, namely INSA, Bangalore Academy, and uh, Allahabad Academy. Uh, out of 585, 69 people have been recognized with Padma Shri, 49 people uh, have been recognized by Padma Bhushan, and 16 have got it this Padma Bhushan. And all three recognitions, uh, eight people have got it, which includes the name Professor Kasturi Rangan, Professor Gordhan Mehta, Dr. A.P. Mitra, Dr. P. Rama Rao, Raja Ramana, CNR Rao, H.N. Setna, M.S. Swaminathan. And only one Bhatnagar Awadi, uh, uh, recipient of this uh, Bharatatna, Professor CNR Rao. And uh, uh, the fellows of uh, these three academies, 388 people have been uh, uh, fellow of FNA, uh, the, this uh, Allahabad Academy fellows, uh, 315. And Bangalore Academy, 425 have uh, this Bangalore Academy membership, fellowship. And if you uh, add on like all the three uh, academy members, 244 Bhatnagar laureates have got uh, these three, all three academy member fellowship. Uh, there is another uh, national uh, recognition Infosys Prize, which was instituted in uh, 2008. Until date, it has been uh, given to uh, eight people. If you exclude this uh, our economics and humanities, uh, 52 scientists have been recognized with this uh, Infosys Prize. And he, I, I'm happy to share this thing, like uh, out of that 52, 33 are already the recipient of Bhatnagar Prize. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be uh, concluding my uh, talk with uh, this family of Bhatnagar laureates. These are the married couples, uh, like uh, Archana Gupta, Archana Sharma uh, in biological sciences, and uh, Arun Gumar Sharma in biological, both uh, uh, in biological sciences, uh, the Arun Sharma was recognized in 1967, uh, whereas Archana Sharma got it in 75. Shubhar Tole and Sandeep Trivedi, uh, Sandeep Trivedi got it in uh, physical sciences in 2005. Shubhar Tole got it in biological sciences in 2010. Yamuna Krishnan and Arindam, Arindam Ghosh, uh, Arindam Ghosh got it in uh, physical sciences in 2012. Whereas Yamuna Krishnan got it in 2013 in chemical sciences. Uh, this SR Ramaswamy, the FRS, he is also a fellow of uh, Royal Society. Uh, he got it in 2000 in physical sciences, where Ramadu Govindrajan got it in uh, 2007 in engineering sciences. The father son relation, the Divan Singh Bhakuni, uh, who got it in chemical sciences, and Vinod Bhakuni, uh, Shrikant Lele, and Ashish Lele and this uh, maternal grandfather and grandson like uh, sc maheshwari was a nana of uh, this uh, professor anurag Arwal, who got it in 2014 in medical sciences and uh, if you see the relationship in uncle and nephew this uh, sayyed mahmud nakvi and sajid waji uh, ahmed nakvi both got it in earth sciences uh, they are a relationship of chacha and bhatija uh, this uh, sumit bhaduri uh, Sharushita Shakarvarti was a niece of uh, uh, Sumit Bhaduri and uh, brothers uh, like Deepak Mathur and Pradeep Mathur, one got it in 2000, the other one in 1991. Uh, Deep, Pradeep Mathur got it in chemical sciences and Deepak Mathur got it in physical sciences. The recent one is Arindam Ghosh and Amrish Ghosh. Amrish Ghosh got it in 2018 and uh, Amri, uh, Arindam got it in 2012, both in physical sciences. So with these, I am now concluding my, uh, this talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Inderpal Singh, for this very, very interesting talk, showing us the connections that the laureates have, each laureate, multiple prizes, and so on. Thank you very much indeed. And now I invite 
comments and questions from the audience. Audience, please raise hand if you want to say something or ask a question. You can raise hands physically also. Professor Grover, both. Professor Grover. So thank you for a very interesting and informative talk. So you have given us a large agenda. We were already featuring, uh, you know, a series where we were hosting uh, lectures by children of uh, eminent scientists. So you have given us a huge agenda. So on behalf of SPSTI, we will keep featuring, picking up uh, from your statistics and bring out uh, people in public domain to for the Civic Society Forum, because these are very inspirational stories. And, you know, human stories are the ones which people like to listen to. So, and since we are, as a, we are operating at the Civic Society Forum, so your talk is extremely informative for us. And thank you very much once again for giving us an agenda for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have not uh, covered this, uh, uh, the, uh, like uh, the people who have mentored, like, like a PhD guide and a student who have been conferred with Bhatnagar Award. Like I have told about this uh, GN Ramachandran, like uh, uh, Professor M. Vijayan, uh, four of his students have got it, this GN Ramachandran. Like in uh, Bhatnagar Prize, Professor CNR Rao is the highest number of uh, Bhatnagar uh, laureates, pro, like his students, four, stu four of his students got the Bhatnagar Prize also, which includes Professor D.D. Sharma and uh, um, uh, Pradeep Tha Tha Thalepil, uh, S. Rameshesha, and uh, I am forgetting another, another name that four, he is the four, and, uh, and Professor Vijayan also, like four, three of his students have got the Bhatnagar, which includes our former DG, Dr. Shekhar Mande, uh -huh. uh, in Karsalunke and uh, Rajan Sankar Naranan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Rao, please come forward. And okay, first of all, thank you very much for the nice lecture. I really enjoyed it because there was so much statistic data. I think I will take time to digest all stuff and read again. And if possible, I would also like to buy your book or obtain it. Now, as far as the statistics, I really liked it. I was enlightened. Now you also in the beginning you told that there are some sort of research program by the CSIR being a historian of science. I would be interested to know whether there is any pro program from the CSIR for the foreign scholars. This is one question. The second is you have shown that the statistic in the very beginning that India has 2% of its contribution in the highest citation. Yes. Uh, my comment is, but if we see our population on the world level, then I would say this 2% is too less for so much money. What would you like to say about it? I'm sorry for the critical question, but that <laughs> should be there. Uh, correct, you are correct. Uh, 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 definitely, I by your point. Uh, uh, but uh, this is the statistics. Of course, uh, the India okay. is a vast country, but uh, this is the this statistics says like this. So there there is some basis. So that is why. So I, I don't have anything to say. This thing uh, I'm just going by the statistics which we are. So what to say, like, of course, we are agreeing that India is a vast country. There are so many people out here. Uh, but uh, uh, you have to have some basis on the this uh, statistical aspects only. Then you can progress and all. Otherwise, without having some uh, uh, statistical analysis, then uh, how it, 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 it is it is very much required. And yeah. Okay. Now to the first question about the uh, grant for the foreign scholar for history of science in the CISR or CSR is only interested for the science and technology, not 
about the history of science and technology no no as of as of date uh, we don't have any scheme for this uh, history of science but yeah. uh, we we are uh, we have several schemes for basic sciences and uh, engineering sciences as of there no uh, we don't have any uh, okay. scheme for uh, history for of science okay uh, uh, insa do have their this there is some program with insa uh, but we don't have right now we don't have any program for history for science history but of science. sir your people they are making the history yeah so <laughs> also right the definitely history. yeah but uh, like uh, very few people are uh, like uh, i didn't find even in uh, like in the uh, we we are running this uh, research schemes projects we didn't find any projects uh, such type of project otherwise we would have encouraged uh, okay. for such uh, type because we promote this uh, uh, interdisciplinary science and technology also yes. so okay. uh, definitely if somebody willing to submit a project or something like that we will be glad to support okay thank you very much Thank you. And now I request Dr. Indusha to unmute. Uh, I can see you have questions in the chat. So please unmute yourself. In case you can't, I will read out these questions. Uh, okay, Dr. Indusha is asking, what about publications through CSIR grants? And second is why priorities are not set for every institute in research. publications and why priorities are not set for every institute in research that is dr indusha publications like uh, the all the institutes have their mandate and uh, their priorities uh, like uh, csir also having their thrust area programs which uh, like uh, which csir also promotes so i i didn't get the first question like publications what, what does this mean uh, uh, why priorities are not set for every institute in research What yes sir so uh, good presentation actually i am in pj chandigarh and uh, i wanted to ask about the publications through csir grants that means that uh, csir has given some grants and uh, are there in, on record any good publications having good citation index so that type of uh, question Yeah, Or, yeah. Uh, after which some patent was uh, received that also in, is included in uh, good quality research correct correct this is a, like uh, if uh, csir supports some project or something like that so uh, in case of any publications or a patent uh, it is uh, the liability of a, a pi to acknowledge where they uh, who which is the funding agency and at the time of the submission of ftr this final technical report all these statistics were asked by the pi and this uh, we we are maintaining this ftr database where we have all this uh, publication record and the patents uh, out of these projects i would like to say that every institute should have uh, their priorities in research and uh, be, uh, after that only we can uh, expect that our performance will be better and we will not be only in uh, getting only 2% it that will be more than that <laughs> so uh, the problem here is everyone wants to do the research in the same field so there is a uh, competition and people then prefer foreign uh, collaborators for research so that is why indian people don't come forward so if they prefer indian collaborations inter institute collaborations and there is priority set for every institute then uh, uh, the uh, performance will be better for every institute thank you Thank you, Dr. Inusha, for your remarks, thought-provoking. And now I request Dr. Sanjeev Kumar to unmute himself. Sanjeev Kumar. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for a nice talk and very crisp talk. And uh, I was interested in particularly the last slide that you have shown uh, the, for the different uh, Patnagar awardees and their relations with the other awardees. because uh, we are following uh, professor arindam ghosh at iisc and uh, i came to know that uh, yumna krishnan uh, is his wife and amrish ghosh is his brother so but the talk is really very nice and uh, it's very good thank you thank you very much thank you very much uh, i may have this is up to the my knowledge like i may have missed something also uh, i am not sure there are there 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 could, there could be lot of stories so 
I may be missing something, but uh, I try to cover all the things. I mean, Professor Narsimhan's daughter also got the Bhatnagar Award. Too. She's at JN Center. Mathematician Narsimhan's yeah. daughter. Uh, Ms. Narsimhan's daughter. Yeah, she got Bhatnagar Award. Yes. So, Kaya, I have a. I, I came to know via Dr. Indrapal Singh another information. There are six women in US who are members of the National Academy of Sciences. Yes. That's a very large number. And uh, the six, these six, these are not foreign members of the National Academy of Sciences. They are U.S. members of the U.S. citizens who are U.S.-based. I don't know whether U.S. citizen, but U.S.-based uh, academia who are members of the National Academy of Sciences. They induct and, as a member. They are. They have yeah. been inducted as a member, not as a oh. foreign associate. Okay. First one, eldest of them is Lalita, the sister of uh, Venki Ramakrishnan. Then there is Amita Sahagal, Sangeeta Bhatia, Renu Malhotra, Anjana Rao, and Jita Narlikar. And I was talking to Ajit Kimavi the other day. The, the Pune Knowledge Cluster would be happy to join hands with SPSTI if we host these six women one by one in the next uh, year. Okay, We run this series in partnership with Pune Knowledge Cluster. And uh, I think it will be quite popular. We have to add... And it will be a source of inspiration. Five of them are educated in India. Only one of them is educated in US. The rest of them are all educated in India. They have gone up, gone out and made it to on their own steam. To the one of them is very young. She is uh, tipped to be the Nobel laureate of the future. She is not only a member of the National Academy of Sciences. She is also a member of the National Academy of Engineering. Also the National Academy of Medical Sciences. You know, so the, we have these very iconic uh, women of Indian origin and uh, we should feature them. And maybe you should uh, start taking this initiative. Ropen Mrigang uh, Sur, uh, because he is our advisor anyway at SPSTI. And uh, the, the youngest one who is tipped to be a Nobel laureate is an MIT faculty. So I think uh, once our series gets over, we should feature this. Okay. Good, thank you. Very good tips. And Alok, I can see your raised Dr. Professor Alok Shivastava, Chemistry Punjab University. Alok ji, thank you. A very interesting uh, presentation, uh, Dr. Singh. I mean, uh, I was really mesmerized by the statistics which you actually came up with. I didn't know many things about till I heard your lecture today. But one thing which caught my attention was that I, what I saw was that uh, one of the slides I saw there, it was written that Indian Institute of Science, 12% people, IIT is 62, and your CSIR's contribution to Indian science is almost like 38%. So this 100% goes between these three these three organizations. I, what I know, I have been also working with CSIR in different committees, and I've also worked for DRDO. DRDO is also a very big organization, so I didn't find any contribution in your uh, analysis. And the other thing also I missed was the university contribution. Where do we stand? Because universities are the main, you know, platform which really will bring the country to a you know, higher stage where the students are the one which will become scientists. And then we have to have people who can really motivate the students. So who are these people? How many of them are there really to, who could motivate? Why things are only in institutes? And why only one institute or only IITs? So somewhere I think we are only building what you call centers of excellence and we're hyping about that. But I don't see any islets of excellence, which I see abroad where I go. There are so many institutes I can talk about, but here I don't find. Why are you so proud about all this? So could you please give your view, share your view? Because you are you have got a lot of info. I don't have. This is just as a general layman and as an academician who works in India as well as abroad. And I just wanted, I just got into this uh, thinking mode because of your presentation. So if you can share your views, I know you 
your views are not the ultimate. There will be many people involved in this type of decision. So I just wanted to know your views and any other person who would like to share his views. Sir, I, I just wanted to make this thing clear that I, which I've showed you that top 2% scientists, world most cited scientists, which includes 2,700, and mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I have showed like taken three institutes, IIC and all IITs and CSIR, which mm -hmm. contributes to 30%. Say, for example, 800, 800 scientists belongs to these three institutions. Rest 70% belongs to other. I have not good. taken... Well, very good news. That's very yeah. good news. So this is so just a 30%. To so make answer. this comparison with the IITs and ISE, because the thing is, every whenever you say uh, some something says the IAC people have got it. So that is why I have made a comparison with the IACs and all IITs. Otherwise, this is the only 30% share of 2,700 people. Okay, that's quite welcoming. <laughs> okay, Ani. And what about uh, the other uh, question which I wanted to... Uh, get some information that, 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 uh, if you I, that, that can be done in a like uh, uh, of course uh, there is a share uh, of uh, drdo also the scientists working in drdo as well as the people faculty working in central universities state yeah. universities that uh, that 70 percent i have not but uh, it, it it can be done that it, it is not like that like uh, so many scientists from jnu they they are in that list so many people from delhi university so yeah. many people from Calcutta University. So it's not like that. So I've taken just 30% share of that 2,700. So if you could help us, I mean, that would help us in uh, making policies maybe to encourage science in sure, such sure. where it has not been encouraged. So I, I would request you to do that. Sure, sir. Sure, <laughs> right. sure. Okay. Thanks for this clarification. And now I'll give you the floor. I'm just wondering, what advice would you render for improving the performance of the universe? Apparently, there are several centrally administered division universities and other good universities on the state. So, what advice would you give to them? Well, I, 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 I will not give the advice. I am not that much competent enough to give that. But the thing is, the the pace which we are going on the Indian the the SNT in India going with the pace, it, it's very uh, uh, encouraging. And uh, uh, I, I, I I will not comment on this thing. I was expecting a question from you. Why after C V Raman we didn't got a Nobel Prize? So I'm no. I'm not. <laughs> no. uh, no, everybody. But the thing is, I am. I, I can see the glorious future of uh, India because if you compare it with the China, uh, the, I've showed this uh, India's ranking in Shimagos. It is 30, uh, 39, whereas the China has got the first rank. And the Nobel laureates from China, there are only nine Nobel laureates. And from India, if you combine all, there are no, nine Nobel laureates. And the last few years, if you compare the scientific output of the China, it is going with, with anything. So uh, India has a glorious future. Definitely in coming years, we are going to have very uh, number of Nobel laureates as well. So it's not the universities, every universities or a central universities or a state universities or a R&D organization. All are putting their best efforts in science and technology. And I, I, it is my opinion, I can see the glorious future of the country. Well, I, I, I tend to disagree with you partly. The reason <laughs> is that the appointments in the university, state universities, are largely driven by consideration other than merit. You see, a person who has done PhD from Bengal would hardly find a job in Punjab or Haryana and vice versa. Do they apply? They don't apply. Even if they apply, they know they won't get it. No, I sir. Mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm talking about the state universities. I'm not talking state, about... Yes, correct, Krishna. But in R&D institution, you see the your uh, neighborhood institution, the ISR. You see no, the... I'm, uh, I'm not talking about the centrally administered institution like CSIR and many other, or for that matter, other such uh, councils. But the fact of the matter is that the appointments in our university, I mean the state administered university, is not up to the mark. I can certainly say that with whatever exposure I had in Haryana and partly in other states. That is one issue. The marriage is something secondary. Second issue is 
that we we are being funded by very good agencies for doing research but why we are not able to mark take a mark at the national do you think people from germany would come and do post doc in india can we come to that level that some of the institutions provide opportunity for doing post doc in our country correct but uh, if you see so many universities even the private universities are coming up where this you will find the foreign faculty as well as foreign post docs like ashoka university uh, they, these the, state, the other st state university i i'll not comment on the state university because they are very much politically uh, interfered so uh, but the so many private universities are coming up even central universities where foreign faculties are there and people are coming for this uh, uh, post docs and all and finally one question is because i am grateful to csir when i started in phd at iit kanpur i met dr atmaram also that time dg and he was kind enough to entertain students so we met him and i got the fellowship so that i could start phd of course i left in between So CSR has been very nice to encourage students. There is no doubt. But the issue is that how to do we nurture them after they do PhD? Because finding a job becomes very difficult in Assam. So somebody has to think about it. How to keep them going? You know, you can do PhD, you can do both of where what else? So you must compare the data. How many PhDs have been generated? How many PhDs have been able to get job? So that is one reason why they are seeking to do PhDs and uh, look for job. I think some analysis, some policy framework needs to be made by CSR because this is the largest council in the country. It's a mother council in a way. आप इसे टू के दूसरी काउंसिल्स बने हैं बट यू आर द यू आर द फादर फिल्म करेक्ट सर वी वेल टेकन पॉइंट सर वी विल वी विल थिंक ओवर दिस थिंग एंड आई थिंक वी शुड डू एनालिसिस ऑफ पीएचडी टू हाउ डू दे गेट जॉब्स एंड व्हाट द डिफिकल्टीज दे फेस इन गेटिंग जॉब्स आई थिंक रोज आई हैव बीन माय चांसलर फॉर नंबर ऑफ इयर्स ऑफ दिस द मोस्ट प्रेस्टीजियस यूनिवर्सिटी बजाज but uh, i i i make this point out here like a, either uh, whosoever present out here is any point of time uh, in their career or beneficiary of csir or related to csir whether uh, getting a fellowship or uh, getting a, uh, assistance for this travel grant or any 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 aspect like uh, anywhere that csir is related to each and every person present out here in this forum as well no no i am saying that csir has been doing extremely good job there is I, I myself said that I am grateful to you because I got fellowship. I just applied and I got it. So there was no safari. There was nobody to ponder over it. So all that I am saying is that time has come to look at the environment of the 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 students who do PhD. There must be somewhere the boys and girls get jobs. And that is why you see a lot of bright people move away from the. Uh, from the uh, research even though it has been mandated gate wagera hoga net hoga lekin kitne colleges mein jo teachers lagte hain wo phd bhi nahi hote hain but net 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 gate ho gaya phd nahi hai our uh, regulation is now quite strictly imposed on uh, gate most gate. of the states gate and net is fine but i think beyond gate now ab itne phd hum log uh, produce kar rahe hain तो क्या हम उसमें ऐड नहीं कर सकते पीएचडी हो आप अब वो हिंदुस्तान 1960 और 1970 का नहीं रहा हम 1920 से 22 वी आर लुकिंग फॉर 1950 2050 एंड वी आउट पास चाइना इन पॉपुलेशन एंड वी विल द लार्जेस्ट कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड तो मेरा ये मानना है हर चीज में नॉट ओनली साइंस कि या तो आप एक घोड़े की तरह बनो या फिर हाथी की तरह चलो 
youngest population demographic uh, dividend we used to talk about five years back we have large number of institutions large number of labs cutting across the countries more than 800 universities so there is itna bada adara hai 4.5 crore log jo hai universities mein hai aati hai to population kai countries ki nahi so i feel we can dominate our people are excellent but we need to nurture them by way of financial support phd kar le to usse job nahi mil pati hai wo kahan jaye jo phd kar तो ये ये है आपको और अदर काउंसिल को मिलकर सोचना चाहिए Would you like to say uh, a word? Uh, yeah, I like to thank you, and I like to connect with you, so that we can have few more lectures on uh, from your side. Uh, it was excellent and thought provoking, and I was provoked. I'm sorry if I made any adverse comments, but <laughs> but I do believe that uh, we need to nurture the younger lot who do PhDs. अभी तो बहुत अच्छे बच्चे जाने की कोशिश भी नहीं करते PhD. तो आपके लेक्चर ने बहुत से आइडियाज हमें दिए हैं फिर से सोचने के बारे में एंड यू हैव आर स्टैंडिंग इनविटेशन टू स्पीक ऑन आर फोरम एनवर यू लाइक और यू कैन आस्क आवर कोलीग्स सो थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड आई आल्सो लाइक टू थैंक प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र सिंह प्रोफेसर गोवर प्रोफेसर रालू श्रीवास्तव एंड अदर गुड जॉइंट आस्क थैंक यू महिपाल जी आपको मैं म्यूट करती हूं और अगले लेक्चर्स फ्लैश करेंगे आप नहीं वो बनाए बनाए नहीं मैं एंड आई लाइक टू थैंक सुजीव कुमार जी आल्सो हम पढ़ देते हैं धर्मवीर धर्मवीर जी आई थिंक दैट लेक्चर ऑन पॉपुलेशन इज नॉट इन आवर लिस्ट बट वुड यू लाइक टू यू नो से फ्यू वर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू कंडक्ट अ लेक्चर ऑन द सेंसस बाय अ यंग आईएएस ऑफिसर from iit kanpur and phd from princeton he joined the service and he is uh, regional director census operations at chandigarh and he has accepted my invitation to speak on this forum abhishek yeah. abhishek yes, so that lecture we are trying to organize so that even colleges can hear them because census is so fundamental and everybody contributes in a small way because we all file our Uh, data and i think digital census is likely to come about so it is good to hear about uh, about the system that they will put in place and how they would handle the data so uh, professor grover i consulted him and he also appreciated that we yeah, we it could be very interesting my pal aapne taiyar kar rakha hai no ma'am slide is not ready the next lecture is not, not there is not there so next lecture i think is on 6th june or something june 4 we will try to arrange the selection lecture i beg your pardon june we'll try 4. to have the selection lecture on june 4 okay all right i'll talk to you next lecture okay thank you once again uh, everyone hmm? okay sir ओके थैंक यू आज सो इट इज समथिंग इन द चैट बॉक्स हां चैट बॉक्स में देखो इनुशा इज थैंकिंग फॉर द इवनिंग थैंक यू थैंक यू इनुशा फॉर स्टेइंग विद अस